All right, let's jump into our voiceover since it's so windy outside. But here at the first bed, we have some Lemon Boy tomatoes, and we already have a big bunch of fruit here. The second one over is a pink brandy wine. Nothing has uh, produced just yet on this one. This third one is going to be a Cherokee purple, and we have several flowers, so hopefully we'll have some fruit soon. And then this fourth one here is going to be your purple bumblebee cherry tomato. And I want to show you up close what they look like because they're so neat. And look at those cute little guys. They're variegated, so I can't wait for them to ripen to see what color they are. This determinant tomato has got several fruit on it. And these are going to be your big slicers. This is the 100th anniversary centennial. And on the opposite side, which is another determinant plant, we have what looks like one, two, three, four fruit on this one. This is our ground cherry, and you'll have to forgive the cinnamon that got sprinkled all over it, but my son thought that it was supposed to go on top of the plant and not around the ant bits. But take a look at this little guy. Isn't it cute? If you've never had a ground cherry, and this is my first year, they are super duper sweet. I, I feel like they taste like sweet tarts. And you can see the plant is just loaded with fruit. These are all of the peppers, and these are some jalapeno peppers. We have some shishito peppers, but they're not looking as good this year as my peppers did last year, and we'll talk a little bit more about that, but I was really kind of disappointed to see that they're not doing well. On this side of the bed, we have our uh, other peppers, which is like your bell peppers. We've got a yellow bell pepper, a red bell pepper, a green bell pepper, and a couple more jalapenos. And if you look at the leaves, they just look deficient. Even though I've fertilized them and have trimmed them, they just, they're just they not looking like they're getting what they need in order to be uh, you know, growing and, and looking good. But on this one, I wanted to show you our little bell pepper here. And I know that I'm supposed to be taking this off, but I just don't have it in my heart. Look how cute it is. So I'm just going to leave it. The onions are looking really good all down the bed here. Um, they haven't started bulbing yet, but the stems are really thick, so I'm hoping that these, you know, will bulb at some point, so I'm going to give it a little bit more time. But the bed looks pretty good, I think. Pretty full. Walking over to the second bed over here, um, you see we have more onions. Again, the same stage as the other bed. There's really no bulbing. And then I popped in a couple more tomatoes here, a couple of cherry tomatoes, and, um, and it's like the sun gold cherry tomatoes. So we have three plants. On the opposite side here, um, we had two plants planted. This one looks like it got eaten by something. And this one is, I believe it's a broccoli. Even though it's a little late in the season, I'm still going to leave it. This is a baby kale. And then here are all the radishes. But I wanted to show you something. I actually planted all of these radishes at the same time. But look at how the ones on the right are so much smaller than the ones on the left. I think it has something to do with the way the sun hits the bed. And so I think that when I plant radishes next time, I'll know not to plant right here, but maybe more along the edge of the bed. All like right here. All right, on over to the third bed. I have a couple of experiments going on. These are our climbing cucumbers. And you see that I've got them planted all close together, and that is because I originally transplanted about four plants, and you will see a huge difference. This is the transplant, and it looks very mature in the leaf structure than the ones next to it. And I don't know if it got stunted or what happened to it, but it's not grown. The ones next to it are all directly sown, and so they're doing a lot better than the transplants. And I think next year what I'm going to do is I'm just going to direct sow my cucumbers in the spring. So I'll have to thin these out a little bit, but I'm excited to see that the direct sown ones are catching up pretty quickly. Soon we'll have some cucumbers climbing up that trellis. I popped in another little ground cherry, and it's also full of little ground cherries. I'm waiting for them to be done so I can get a couple. On the other side, the same thing that happened with my cucumbers also happened with my um, beans. These, these are beans, and the leaf structure looks so different than this one right here, or this one over here. So, and I got some other little ones that I popped in. 
So I'm just going to direct sew those next year as well. This one didn't make it. So my transplants this year, something something just didn't work out. But on that side, we'll have the cucumbers, and then this side, we'll have some climbing beans. In this corner, it's yet another transplant epic fail. This is okra, and it has done nothing since I planted it over a month ago. All right, we got pretty full beds. And this one will, it'll look full here in, in the middle of the summer pretty soon. But let's jump on over to the in-ground bed. I'd like to show you our squash success this year so far. Look at all of that. We have two of the spaghetti squash here. And then all of these are yellow squash, summer squash, the straight neck. And I can't remember the name of it, but the ones that look like discs. Here's the straight neck. And we've got some fruit already on them. And these are the disc ones. We have one there. And one right there. They're cute. This squash is also the same uh, as the one to the left. And yet it looks really small. And this one has some fruit on it as well. All back here is where I planted the sunflowers. And only a handful of them. See those big ones? Those are sunflowers, and only a handful of them popped up, so I was kind of disappointed that all of that didn't get filled. And I went ahead and decided I'm going to succession sow, and so I actually planted some more sunflowers, but all in the back here are your mammoths. I think that's the only mammoth right there that actually came up. And you'll see right down here are the little baby sunflowers that I planted the other day. And I think we have two rows here, yes. I also have another row back here of some more. I also directly sewed in the corn, and this whole corner over here was supposed to be full of corn, but yet only a handful of them actually popped up. See, there's one right here. The weird thing is that the corn is kind of laid over right there, and I'm not really sure if it's because of the wind or maybe it didn't get planted deep enough. I'm not really sure why it's laid over. Some of them are and some of them aren't. Look at that. This one's not, but then again, it could be supported by this ugly weed over here, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull some of that. Also, I just popped in some marigold seeds from the Dollar Tree, and I wanted to show you that a few of those popped up as well. Look at these babies. And this is a much more mature marigold. But they all came from that Dollar Tree box of marigold seeds. Usually the ants carry off with the seeds and I don't get anything, but I actually got a couple. So all of these little baby sunflowers here, I'm hoping we'll fill in those spots and it'll be fun this summer. Okay, I wanted to take a walk over to the peppers. All right, I wanted to do a quick intermission to tell you about my pepper story. So last spring, I was in a temporary housing situation where our house was being built, and so I had to grow all of my plants in containers. The ones that really survived and did the best were my peppers. I had such a wonderful pepper year. I was so excited at all the things that I learned about container gardening, especially when it came to the peppers. And I grew everything. I mean, I grew the serrano peppers, jalapeno peppers, bell peppers, shishito peppers, um, you name it, I probably had it in the container. And they did so good and all of these plants were started from seed. And now that I'm jumping into our new location and I'm doing peppers in our beds and they're not looking very good, it's really disappointing because I know what a good pepper harvest looks like. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do two different methods of growing peppers this year. So I just wanted to share with you kind of the backstory of my pepper harvest of last year. Y'all, I totally messed up the footage and this is all I had. So I'm doing some instant replays so you can at least see what it looks like. But this is gonna be my second pepper experiment of this year. All right, on to the tour. Check out this cute little container determinant tomato plant. This is Adam's plant, and I cannot believe how much fruit is on this little plant. 
but check this out. The most mature fruit, we found this this morning. Look at that, looks like the birds got to it. So I left it out so they can finish eating that and not touch my beautiful blushing fruit. And I'm gonna be covering these with some pantyhose, fruit pantyhose things. I'll show you what those look like. So cute. In their bed, they have their wild and crazy tomato plants. They don't prune. I pruned a little bit, but not like I'd like. And these are a couple of different varieties. I think there's three different varieties to include the lemon boys over here in the corner. And um, there's nothing that you can see in the front, but if you actually take a peek in the back of the trellis, you will see, boom, there's your fruit. These are the lemon boys right here. Look how big they are. And then this is the genuine slicing tomato. Looking good. They have several pepper plants in their beds that look a lot better than mine. These are banana peppers. And then they have some jumbo jalapeno peppers and some shishito peppers. But they're a lot bigger than mine look. They haven't been trimmed or pruned like they should be. And you can see the little flowers on them. On the corner of the bed is another cherry, ground cherry. Look at this one. I found another one. This one is also loaded with fruit. These little ground cherry plants do so good. I think I'm going to steal a couple of them. Jackson doesn't like them anyway, so I'll just have me a little garden snack. Awesome. Their bed looks good. Over here is the melon patch where we have one, two, three, that's actually a cantaloupe. That one's the watermelon. So we have three watermelon plants and one cantaloupe plant and they're starting to take off. You can see their runs. And there's one over here that really, there you go. There's, see they're starting to take off and they have these little tendrils on them. So I am hopeful and anticipating that this whole space is gonna be filled with melons. That'll be so awesome. Now, right next door is my no-dig bed that has my potato plants in there, and they're looking good. They have a weed right there. Don't ignore that. But see, you can see the potatoes are kind of sporadic. I did pop in a little squash over here, so I have another squash plant. It's doing pretty good. But when it's time to harvest these potatoes, I am very anxious to see how many potatoes we get out of this bed. I didn't plant as many as I should have. And so next year will be different, but this is, this is kind of what I had available at the time. Right over here is the in-ground uh, bed that I have my onions planted. So I've actually tried three different methods of planting. This is the one onion that I feel really good about. It's really thick at the top, and you can see at the bottom that it's starting to bulb a little bit. So that excites me, but the other ones don't really look like that. I mean, they're all various sizes, and they don't look like they're going to be bulbing anytime soon. So I have one onion to look forward to. This is just going to be an overview of the entire garden from the back corner. These are the two in-ground beds, the potatoes and the onions that we were just looking at. And then in the back there, we have a strawberry planter as well as a couple of containers. Um, in buckets hanging from the fences are some tomatoes. And there is Adam and Jackson's bed and the beds that we were looking at earlier. There are the little peppers I didn't get to show you and in the back, the sunflowers. But isn't it so nice this time of evening? I'm so happy to see all of this progress so far. Hey guys, so I know that was a quick tour, but I hope you enjoy checking out the garden this evening. It's so beautiful out this time at night. It's about seven o'clock-ish, maybe about like 7.20, closer to 7.20. And um, just walking through this with you just makes me feel so excited for what the summer has to bring with all this harvest, if I do my job right. I'm going to go ahead and start taking those little pantyhose things that I told you about and getting the tomatoes all wrapped up so that nothing will take them away from me like they did that one year when all those rats were getting out. Let me show you what those look like real quick though. Hold on. I bought these a couple years ago at Walmart and they're really just, that's really all it is is pantyhose. It's kind of hard to do this with one hand. 
but you can see that there's you know an opening on, on both ends and you just wrap your fruit or whatever you're trying to protect if not tomatoes maybe it's something else that you don't want any pests to get but that's what I'm going to use to protect my tomatoes and I'm hoping I have enough of them for all the tomatoes that I have out here but thank you guys for joining me on this garden tour this is the first full garden tour um, and I'm excited to see how this year goes I've learned a lot of lessons so far all right guys well I'm gonna sign off and thanks for watching until next time take care bye bye <laughs>